Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about our 5G mobile platform with P4 Enable Network Slicing at Mac. So first, my name is Wei Chen Wang, or you can call me Wilson Wang. And I'm an uh, NCTU PhD candidate and also an E3 engineer. Um, I have been involved in ONF activity uh, since 2016. And in 2016, we demonstrated the SDNIP project together at Open Networking Summit. And in 2017, uh, we demonstrated how to integrate OAIEPC as a service into MCORD at CoreBuild. And last year, uh, we demonstrated our OAI MCORD platform with P4 enabled network slicing. Okay, so today, I'm going to show our uh, 5G mobile platform, which is complete with ETSI manual architecture using uh, NCTU free 5G core as our 5G EPC and uh, uh, with loading reduction in Mac with P4 switch feature and also P4 enable network slicing. So now uh, we know that uh, 5G needs virtualized network functions to make 5G network more flexible and uh, efficient. And moreover, because of the rise of uh, cloud native technique, uh, more and more VMF are now based on cloud native containerization connect technology. And so to, to, so that we can achieve uh, lower overhead and higher performance. So therefore, uh, ETSI, they just proposed the NFV manual architecture. So now there are many, many uh, NFV manual projects now, but most of them are too complicated or uh, insufficient support of CNF architecture or high resource usage. So that's why uh, we need and we propose our own 5G lightweight NFV manual platform. Um, our, our 5G lightweight NFV manual pla mobile platform uh, utilizes SDN, NFV, and cloud to provide 5G core flexibility and uh, scalability. And we use all open source projects, including Kubernetes, Onos, and uh, free 5G core as our 5G core CNFs. So first, uh, let me briefly introduce the NFV manual architecture. It is an architecture uh, framework defined by ETSI. And you can see that there are three NFV, uh, NFV manual functional block on the right side. NVO, uh, NFVO and uh, NF, uh, VFM and uh, VIM. Okay. So uh, the NFVO, uh, it manages the instantiation of V. VNFM, and also manage the life cycle of network service. And the VNFM, it manages the life cycle of VNF instance and can create, maintain, and terminate the VNF instance. And for the, sorry, so the, for the VIM, uh, such as OpenStack, Kubernetes, and uh, Onos will manage infrastructure. And for the VNF, uh, for example, the free 5G core or virtual NAT or VLouter. So we use free 5G core as our 5G EPC CNF. Uh, the free, or I'll just say free 5G C, okay? Free, fi free 5G C is an open source for 5G generation mobile core network created by our our university. And it is based on release 13 EPC, and now it's migrated into the release 15 5G core. Okay. And the free 5G C components include NF, SMF, HSS, PCRF, and UPF. And all of them are now containerized and running on Kubernetes cluster. So now, how should we design a 5G lightweight NFV manual mobile platform? The first thing is that 
on each network function of the free 5G C should be a CNF based on 5G service based architecture. And secondly, uh, we use HAM to install and update a group of data state uh, specific 5G C core. For doing that, we need to create a custom resource definition for the 5G C uh, CNF. And for the new custom resource, so called the uh, 5G C CNF, we introduce a uh, 5G C operator as a VNFM. And as for the NFVO, we employ uh, OLM operator as a uh, NFVO to manage VNFM. And last, we also create a CRD for custom operator such as free 5GC operator for allowing more dynamic uh, custom operator installation and update. Okay, so what is OLM or called Operator Lifecycle Manager? Uh, it is an open source project hosted by Red Hat and we create a CRD for custom operator to treat custom operator as a custom resource in Kubernetes. There's two kind of operator in OLM, and we just use only one called OLM operator. And OLM operator is to watch custom operator, re custom, re custom resource update request from the Kubernetes API server, and perform the custom operator installation and the modification. And for the under, underlay network, we use ONOS as SDN controller. There are two approaches to in, interact with ONOS. The first method is to modify ORM operator to interact with ONOS. So that is control, uh, interact with ONOS controller directly. And the second method is to introduce one more operator called ONOS operator to interact with ONOS controller. This method uh, doesn't, not, doesn't need to modify the ORM operator and can keep each layer to remain independent and uh, straightforward. So we choose to introduce an ONOS operator as a, a VNFM. For doing that, uh, we need to create a CRD for ONOS REST API and treat ONOS API, REST API as a custom resource. So from the time, so from the top down. We use OLM operator as a NFEO to watch custom resource update request of custom, custom operator here. And a custom operator here and on the cube, where is it? Where is my, yes. Uh, OLM operator will watch the a cube API server to install or update the custom operator here, which means the free 5G C operator and the ONOS operator. And there are two VNFM, these two. And they will, uh, the first one is the free 5G C operator. And this operator, which is responsible for watching uh, custom resource update, and it will uh, install or update our 5G C core, CF here, okay? And for the ONOS operator, it will watch the Kube API server too. And if the custom resource have uh, any request, it will install or it will install a uh, flow entry into the underlay network. Okay. So uh, the free 5G C operator was uh, using the operator SDK tool and is and is responsible for installing or updating the free 5G C CNF with HAM. This operator has three components. The first one is the HAM chart of free 5G C CNF, CNFs. It is a template for the Kubernetes resource definition of free 5G C CNF. And the next one is the uh, this YAML file called watches, and which contain the a uh, custom resource name and uh, the HAM chart path. Finally, is the HAM operator. HAM operator, which is the main program of this 5G C operator, is responsible for getting the custom resource name in the watch YAML file. And that is getting the custom resource you want to see. Okay. 
then it will always watch the custom resource update request from the free, free 5GC on the Kube API server. When the HAM operator receives the request, it will transform config of the request content into the HAM config, and then send HAM chart and the config to the Terra server. And about the ONOS operator, it was uh, using the operator SK, SK, SDK 202, and it is responsible for interacting with ONOS controller. This operator has two components. The first one is the spec of the ONOS RESPO API, and the second one is the ONOS operator core. And this core uh, will watch the custom resource update request of the ONOS RESPO API on the Kube API server. And when the request is received, it will transform res ONOS RESPO API custom resource content into the REST API format, and then it will call on us Northbound RESTful API. So how actually we need to install, how actually we, we install or modify our 35GC CNF in our platform? Uh, the first step is the 35GC operator will watch, yeah, here, it will watch the 35GC uh, custom resource update request on the Kube API server. And if it receives and, and the second is the user or the admin, or you can simply just use uh, Ansible for the automation. It will create or update the, the request to the Kube API server to create or update the 35GC custom resource. And the Kube API server will forward the request to the, to the uh, 35GC operator. And the 35GC operator will transform the config of the request content into the having config, okay? And it will send to the Terra server. And then Terra server will combine the uh, HAM chart and config and send the data to the Kube API server. Then the Kube API server will deploy the 35GC CNFs. And about uh, the ONOS. The ONOS will watch the ONOS REST, or REST API uh, constant resource update request on the Kube API server. And also, the user or the admin, or you can use the Ansible to create or update your custom resource. And, and the Kube API server will forward the request to the ONOS operator. And when the ONOS operator receives the request, it will transform the request content into the ONOS REST API format. And the ONOS operator will call uh, here, the ONOS Northbound REST API. So there's one more thing that I worth to share, share with you. Uh, because of the multiple interface requir requirement of the NF and the UPF, so our network plan is to create two interfaces, the ETH, one, uh, ETH0 and for the all CNFs to interact with each other, and the ETH1 for the NF and the UPF to connect to the ENOB. So we use three different CNI here. The first one is the Matters. It is uh, enabling attach multiple network interface to part. And the second CNI, we use the Calico because it, because it, is, it has a good performance for, the, for deliver native Linux networking data plan. And there is no picky in cap and uh, it will minimize the overall CPU usage and uh, uh, occupy, occupancy. Okay. So, and then the third one is the SRV. That is through SRV network hardware virtualization technology. And the NF and the UPF can use its low latency and high throughput benefit in the second interface. So this picture will show our data network here. You can see that each, each component has the ETH zero and it is using the catechol. And for the NF and the UPF, we have the second uh, interface that use, uh, use SRV to connect to the ENOB here. So a previous session is talking about our lightweight 5G platform and the overlay network. Next, uh, I will talk about our underlay network, uh, including Mac upload and uh, bandwidth slicing. Uh, we propose a P4 base 
at Mac network, it can provide better uh, packet I.O. with people switch and reduce Mac loading from the packet in cap and decap. And it can redirect the DNS. So in our design, the people switch is between Inobi and the EPC and connect to the Mac directory. So it is a bumpy in the wire architecture. So now uh, we need to decap the GTPU header before sending it to the Mac, right? And uh, encap the packet with GTPU header before sending it to the UE. That means we need to check the mapping between the UE IP and the downlink TID. Okay, and you can see the here. Uh, you need to decap the GTPU and uh, then encap back the GTPU. So there are two approaches to check the mapping between the UE IP and the UE downlink TID. The first one is packing the downlink G GTPU packet, and the second one is packing the SCTP packet. So for the first one, uh, when people switch receive a downlink GTPU packet, it will check the UE section state table. And if missed, it will pick in this packet to the controller. And the controller will decap the GTPU header and find out the UE IP and the downlink TID. And then it will write two branches into these two tables. The first one is uh, make sure uh, this UE IP has already recorded. And this UE in cap table is for, for this MEC downlink. So it can uh, in cap the GTPU header. However, the previous method has a fatal problem. Uh, if there is no downlink packet from the EPC, we will, never, we will never know the mapping relationship between the UE IP and the, the downlink TID. So we should use a ST, a SCTP packet to do the mapping. Uh, when people switch receive an initial content request, setup request, uh, it will send to a controller, and the controller will get this old message, uh, information. And for the response, it will get the inob address and the downlink TID. So the controller will know all about the UE information. Then it can write to this table, the same table here, to, to uh, check the mapping between the UE IP and the downlink TID. Okay. And another feature that MEC and Mac need the most is the DNS redirection. Uh, when UE sends the DNS request to ask for the uh, specific service on the internet, people switch will change the DNS request header and redirect it to the Mac uh, DNS. And the Mac DNS will know which service can be provided by Mac and then response the request by the Mac service IP. And if not, it will respond by internet service IP. And when people switch receive the DNS reply from the Mac, it will change back the DNS re reply header and send it back to the UE. So there is the table pipeline showing how to look up the session information and how to upload it to the Mac. Okay. And because of, of the time, I will not go to the detail. And the last part is our bandwidth satellite management design. We logically divide the bandwidth resource into multiple bandwidth slides. We use priority queue to isolate bandwidth resource, and each slice contains traffic flow ID from the user-defined field. So the traffic flow in the slice will share the same allocated bandwidth resource. We allocate bandwidth resource for the slice traffic to guarantee the minimal delivery uh, bandwidth, and we also limit the maximum bandwidth. However, um, over more, moreover, traffic between minimal bandwidth and the maximal, maximum bandwidth is best, best effort. Then for the on, on slice traffic, we only provide the best effort to and we use P4 meter to classify the packet. P4 meters use the TRTCM, and TRTCM is mean two-rate three-color marker to classify the packet. 
and uh, we use CR, CIR and the PIR parameter. CIR is, uh, is, is to define the minimum bandwidth of the slice, and the PIR is the maximum bandwidth. Therefore, uh, guaranteed traffic will be marked as green, and uh, the best effort traffic will be marked as red, yellow. Yeah. And any picket is uh, more than the maximum will mark into a red and will be abandoned. Okay, for a guaranteed traffic, we forward the green packet to the higher priority queue of the egress port. So it can provide the guarantee packet enough bandwidth to deliver. But the request guarantee bandwidth cannot, uh, cannot exceed to available link bandwidth because it's, if the guarantee is more than the link can handle, it will always have the packet drop. Okay. And for the best effort traffic, we forward the yellow or non-slice packet to the lower priority queue of the egress port. So, pick, so packet can only deliver by remaining bandwidth. So the packet can only so the picky can only deliver when the higher priority queue is empty on the same link. And for the abandoned traffic, we drop the red packet since the deliver lamp will, uh, will more and uh, will exceed limit bandwidth. Okay, and since we want to ensure the slice can gain the minimal guarantee bandwidth at least to deliver. We need to deliver the green packet of each slice in high priority. Therefore, we configure the priority scheduler to achieve a two-level priority queue. And from this picture, we can see that uh, if we don't use, uh, if we if we don't have the two-level priority queue, the yellow packet will, uh, the yellow packet which are best ever delivered will over also schedule with green packet, which are guaranteed together here, here, uh, here. So the green packet may have the chance to be dropped. And in the two level priority queue, we can make sure that the high priority will always be transferred and the, the lower level priority queue can drop. This is the pipeline design of our data plan, but only the bandwidth slicing part. So you can see, in general, our pipeline will go through MAC, uh, SP Gateway P4, and to the basic, basic is the original on us, they have the basic P4 pipeline here. And now here is the bandwidth slicing P4. Our meter, P, our meter P4 program is an extension to the on us basic pipeline. In our meter P4 pro, uh, program, the, pick, the packet first goes to the slicing table for, for slice identification. And the match field, you can, you can fill in anything you like. Okay. And the second, uh, you will, it will go to the classifier table to, to set the color into green, yellow, and red. And it will see the color uh, if it's a green, it will go to a high priority, and the yellow will go to a lower priority, and the red, it will drop, okay? Okay, in conclusion, we use Red Hat OLM as a NFBO and uh, introduce Free 5 gc operator and ONOS operator as VNFM to build up our lightweight 5G mobile network platform. And we also implement, implement the Mac feature in P4 switch for Mac uploading. And moreover, we integrate our last year work, bandwidth slice management into our platform too. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions here? Yeah. <coughs> Hi, David Lake. Um, you mentioned that you're using P4 switch and you're taking the TEID. Yes. Is the programming of the TEID reference table in the P4 switch, how is, how is that done? Is that another interface that you've developed on the side of, of P4, or are mm -hmm. you doing that through, through some other method? A and which P4 switch, is this a, your own P4 switch, or is it a, 
uh, a hardware switch? It's a hardware switch. We have uh, tested two, two people switch. Uh, first one is H core, and yep. the second one is the Inventec. Okay. These two will work. Okay. And for the TID table and pipeline, we design our own pipeline here. Okay, so the programming of the pipeline, the, the external programming of that TID table, that's that's another piece of software, is it, that's associated with free 5G core, or is that external? Uh, we just follow the 3GPP spec, so I think it is a journal. So is it PFCP that you're you're using for that programming? Or? Oh, you mean you mean the protocol? Yeah. Um. So for now, we use P4 runtime. Okay. So you've developed uh, an interface that yes. talks P4 runtime yes. to. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, as okay. far as I know, uh, you used uh, and still use the open open air interface APC, but uh, why are why you are changing? Because OI performance is, you know, <laughs> and uh, for our free 5G, uh, I, I, I don't have the, the real data, but I think the performance will be much better. Okay. Okay. Any other questions here? Okay, thanks for Thank you. your presentation.